So we had been talking about the role that exact numbers might play in influencing the significant figures in a calculation. So we looked at the example of where we have um, 12 um, inches in a foot, and we recognize that this 12 here is not actually, it does not actually have two significant figures, but rather it's, it's more correctly considered to be having infinitely significant figures. And so when I do the math here, 12 times 3.25 feet, I don't want to round this off to two significant figures. I want to round this off to three significant figures because this guy has infinity significant figures, this guy has three significant figures, and three is clearly smaller than infinity. There's another um, issue that can arise when we're using exact numbers, and that is when we multiply a measurement by a whole exact number. And if this number is um, small, there's two ways that we might think about doing this problem. One is we might treat it as an addition problem, where we just add up um, the size of all of our um, measured numbers. Or the other way is we might consider it to be a multiplication problem, where we take our exact number and we multiply it by that small, uh, we take our measured number and we multiply it by that small whole exact number. So the important thing to recognize is that we always use the first approach. That is, we consider that um, when we have a measured value and we want to multiply it by a small whole number, we're going to consider it to be an addition problem, and then that way we will always end up with the correct number of significant figures in our solution. So here's an example here of showing how what, what can go wrong when we consider it uh, when we take the wrong approach. So the question asks, what is the mass of three coins, that's our small exact number, each with a mass of 6.36 grams? So if I consider this an addition problem where I add 6.36 to itself twice, then I would say, well, this, it's addition, so it's all about the uncertainty of my measurements, and in each case, my uncertainty would be in the 0.01 position. Therefore, my answer should have uncertainty in the 0.01 position, and that would give me a number with four significant figures. However, if I was to consider it as a multiplication problem, I would say, well, here's my three, that's exact, so therefore it has infinite sig figs. Here's my measurement, and that has one, two, three significant figures, so when I multiply those two numbers together, my answer should have three significant, three significant figures. And what you see is by taking this wrong approach, I actually lost one of my significant figures. This is the correct approach, and I have my answer given to plus or minus 0 0.01 grams. So the take-home me um, uh, message here is that when you multiply a measurement by a whole number, your answer should have the same uncertainty, that's the same plus or minus, as the measurement itself. So something that's really important in science um, is being able to correctly use scientific notation and being able to use the scientific notation feature on your calculator. If you're a little bit um, uncertain as to how the scientific notation feature on your calculator works, what I would suggest you do is that you use um, you just kind of Google on YouTube for um, videos that are appropriate for your calculator. I can also help um, to a limited degree in class if you have questions relating to how to use your um, calculator. I'm going to be um, using a TI-83 or TI-84 um, calculator to illustrate some of the things that we'll be um, seeing now with respect to scientific notation. So um, I'll try and find my um, my calculator. So the calculator that I'll be using is a TI-84. Many of you have a calculator like this. It's really similar to the TI-83, which is um, another Texas calculator. You might have a Casio calculator or another brand, and they have similar features, but the buttons might be in different places. So decimal numbers, when they're written in the conventional form, can be really hard to use and can be prone to um, errors in writing them and reading them when we're dealing with either very large or very small numbers. Now, it's very common in chemistry to be dealing with um, large numbers, for example, the number of molecules or atoms in a sample of matter, 
or alternatively we might often deal with some very very small um, numbers like for example the radius of an atom so to help prevent us make errors and just to keep it easy for us entering numbers into our calculator and writing numbers um, down on the page we've come up with a system called scientific notation so in scientific notation we always write numbers with two parts there's a term out the front that always just has one digit to the left of the decimal point so only the one digit to the left of the decimal point and that's referred to as the coefficient and then what we have and um, what we do to the coefficient is we multiply it by a power of 10 and the exponent here the power of 10 that's called the exponent and the whole the, um, the whole power of 10 itself is referred to as the exponential term so key points here is we have an exponential term which is a power of 10 and we're going to that's going to be multiplied by a coefficient that has just one digit to the left of the decimal point. So what is an exponent? Well, an exponent is a number written as a superscript following another number, which is referred to as the base, and it just indicates how many times the base is multiplied by itself. So 3 to the 5 represents the idea that 3 is being multiplied by itself 5 times in a row. So we'll frequently refer to exponents as rather than saying the exponent is 5, we'll say that the power is 5. So 3, 3 with a superscript 5 following it is referred to as 3 to the 5th power. Some of these powers have special names. And so um, the second power, for example, is often referred to as squaring a number. So 3 to the power of 2 might be described as 3 squared. Raising a number to the third power is often referred to as cubing a number, so 3 raised to the power of uh, 3 raised to the power of 3 or 3 to the third power will be referred to as 3 cubed and the same here for 5 another example 5 cubed or we can say 5 to the third power. We can have negative exponents. These are going to give us smaller numbers. And a negative exponent indicates the base and the power to which it's raised are in the denominator of a fraction with 1 in the numerator. So that's a little bit confusing. But when I write something like this, x to the minus 1, that means exactly the same as 1 over x. And an example that we might see later on is when we write something like 1 to the x, we may also sometimes write that just simply as 1 to the x minus 1. That's worth remembering. We often make that little shorthand. So 3 to the minus 2 is exactly the same as 1 over 3 squared. 2 to the minus 5 is the same as 1 over 2 to the 5. 4 to the minus 6, exactly the same as 1 over 4 to the 6. And you can see these give small numbers. So I'm going to demonstrate how we enter in some um, numbers with exponents into the, a Texas calculator. And um, I've been asked to do these calculations and then express my answer to three decimal places. It's important if it says three decimal places that you want to give your answer to having three digits after the decimal point. This is not the same as three significant figures. So I'm just going to bring up my Texas um, TI-84 calculator and um, I'll show you how you enter that into that particular calculator. So here we are, and we want to enter 3 to the 6, so it's 3, and then this little button here is referred to as the carrot. You hit that, and then the 6, and then enter, boom. And so to three decimal places, this would be 729.000. Okay, so now we'll do the next one. It says... 10 to the 4, so we get 1, 0 to the power 4. And away we go. And so this would be 10,000.000. So it's important to include the three decimal places. 9 to the power of minus 2. 
This is important. This is the subtraction button, but this is the minus button. So you want to make sure you hit the minus button and not the subtraction button. And then enter, and there it is, and three decimal places. So this would be 0 0.012, and that would be all that I would write. 8 to the power of minus 1. Enter. And there we go, 0.125, and that would be three decimal places. 2 to the power minus 2 and enter. Okay. And so this would be written as 0.250. Okay, so have a little practice in your own time and make certain that you can enter exponents into your calculator.